Hi everyone, and welcome to my speed run series. Please make sure that you now subscribe and you like this video. It helps me a lot. Obviously, if you don't like me, you don't subscribe. You're on the wrong channel. What are you doing here? Sod off. But you all like it, don't you? And we're playing the speed run series. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with a Dutch defence. And the idea of this is to find out who's cheating on chess.com. I get paid a wage to play speed run and find out all the cheats so we can ban them. <laughs> no, the idea of this is obviously we're going up in rating. We're doing very well. 10 minute chess. And we're trying to uh, work out little tips that will help you improve in these rating boundaries or even if you're not in these rating boundaries now this is the dutch defense and i quite like playing this opening we're going to try out different openings now we get this kind of pawn structure and you get this hold of the central square so the first stage of this is to develop your pieces get your king castled and to control this square so we bring the knight out we control that square we don't really want white to play here and now I've got to think about developing this bishop so I can castle. Now, I always put it in front of my king. Well, not always, but bringing it to pin the white knight is okay. But that's a bit more like a Nimzo opening. And I like putting it here to keep it flexible. So now we can castle. My opponent is playing one of the most critical lines. He puts his bishop on a good diagonal. We now castle, so our king is safe. So this is kind of stage one of, of, of the Dutch that I play. And uh, we wait and see what our opponent does. Knight f3 is the normal move, but he can play other moves. Knight h3. He can play e4, which is not the best move, actually, because we can counter-strike. e4 now is opening up the center, but his king is not quite safe enough for that to be the right idea. He wants to get his uh, king castle before he thinks that. Uh, okay, so this is also not a bad move. Now... The Dutch that I play is called the Classical Dutch. It doesn't really matter what the name is, generally. And in the Classical Dutch, we put these pawns side by side. And we now come to stage two of the Classical Dutch. This is the stone wall Dutch, when you set up like a stone wall. Also a very good opening. But the reason I put the pawn here is to try and push with this pawn here. And I really love getting two pawns like that. Now, these guys over on the queen side, you might be a bit concerned about them, but they, they often come out later on. You don't, no point developing them unless they have a reason. It's more important to do stuff in the center. And this move, e5, is the move that I nearly was aimed to play. And I'm going to play it here. And yes, I know I've lost the tempo playing e6 and e5, but I still think that doesn't matter so much because these two pawns are nice pawns. My opponent castles, and now there's a couple of ways to play this, but another very common plan, once you've got e5 in, is to slip the queen out of the way of this. My opponent could have exchanged queens there, which is fine for me, but I like keeping queens on because I'm an aggressive player. And you also fire the queen over towards your opponent's king. So you can even get ideas of going for a checkmate on this square. So this little queen switch is a very common idea in the classical Dutch. And we've got to keep an eye on what our opponent's playing. Another thing that this also helps us is that the bishop can sometimes pop back to this square. But I do make, need to make a decision what I'm going to do with the knight. Now this bishop you don't really have to worry about. But the knight, I think we, we can make a decision now. And you can put a pawn on this square... And I'm actually very tempted to do that because one of the big holes in the position is this one. And also his bishop is very good. So I could just put a pawn here. And I, I might actually play that here. I think you can maybe bring the knight to that square. But this is maybe more positional because I take some sting out of the bishop. And I take some sting out of the knight coming here. Now this knight can often switch to a6 then come back around here. But... It, a lot of time, again, as, a, as I have mentioned, you don't need to worry about these guys. You can just continue with your plan. And I, Actually, I'm going to do that here. I'm, I'm going to now, because I don't have to worry about this move, and bishop a3 can be a little bit annoying, but he's put his bishop there. I, I, I could play knight a6, not a bad move, but I'm going, to, I'm going to fire my queen over. And this can start aggressive ideas. And For example, knight g4 is one idea that's always hanging now in the position. Um, 
Another idea I very much like playing is f4 at the right moment. And then we swing the bishop in. Uh, and that's why I lead the bishop here, because I want to swing it as far as it can go, all in one move. We don't need to move it somewhere else. I mean, moving it to e6 would be a, a big mistake, actually, because he could go d5. And I want to, after d5, probably go c5 to keep it all closed. Okay, now my opponent, very logically, is trying to exchange queens. But I'm attacking, and when you're attacking... You don't really want to exchange queens unless you have to, because your queen is a very important attacking piece. So I've had this kind of thing happen a lot of times before, and the queen can drop back here. Now, this might look like a funny square, but we still have a little bit of pressure here on these two pawns. And these guys have a lot of potential. I mean, we talked about the f4 move, getting the bishop in. That's why you need the pawn here. But you can even play e5. Okay, I'll, I'll take back now. I'm covering this square for the knight, I'm covering this square for the queen, this square and this square, so I have nice control of these important squares in the middle. Because when you attack on the side of the board, you generally have to have some influence in the centre. My opponent now attacks this pawn, and this, this seems like a very sensible idea. Now I could move it forwards. The problem with that is, is knight finds a nice square, but then maybe I kick, I go g5 and we go, tally-ho, let's check me, shall we? And this would gain a lot of space. Actually, I might, I might do this. But I also think keeping the tension, I don't know about moving the knight because it blocks my bishop in, but maybe this knight could quickly come here. I could also move the bishop somewhere like this. I know that looks very funny, but the bishop is not great. Actually, this move may be interesting. Is there any tactics here I have to worry about? I can't see them. This is interesting, because then my bishop can even take that one, and it points towards this king, and it has a nice square here. Should we try that one? Let's try this one. I'm kind of a little bit... Is that the right move to play? But I like this square, because it's nice and safe, and at some point, I might use this diagonal. And I'm trying to keep these pawns. I'm trying to keep the tension, because as soon as I move the e pawn i lose the potential of moving the f pawn because this this square will be under his control i think e4 was a good move there don't get me wrong but i'm trying to keep the tension in the position my opponent playing pretty well so far playing good natural moves in the position and what am i doing next so i'm probably going to move my bishop here and again i'm not moving this bishop i could develop the knight but don't really see the point of that um and you can see that I'm doing things in this game now that are slightly different to in earlier videos. Earlier videos saying develop all your pieces generally. But you always have to develop them with a reason. You know, why are you putting your piece there? You've got to be able to tell yourself why. And I don't see the point of just putting my knight there for the fact that it, it gets the knight out. I want to actually be able to tell myself, okay, I'm putting the knight there because it might have the potential to jump in. To this square later on or i might better reroute it around to the king side you know you want to be able to really explain to yourself what that future or that piece is okay now this is a very peculiar and slow move from my opponent and we're quite happy to see him move like that because um it should be non-threatening and i quite like this square i mean i really want to go f4 but i don't i want to avoid the little tactics of rook takes here now I could, you know, saying this is this is a bit funny move, but I could go knight here, bishop here, and try to get a rook to d8, and then I'd be really well positioned. But I think I'm just going to move the bishop back, get it, keep it out of any harm's way, and I'm just going to try to checkmate. Why not? <laughs> and I'm going to move that pawn and try to throw my bishop in as quickly as can be, something like that. I mean, maybe this was a better move, but. It's funny how these can stay caged in, but you still have great potential. And you have great potential because of these pawns. Uh, and, I mean, I could have also played e4 then, if the knight comes there, take that one off. But, I don't know. There was lots of options, but... Okay, now he's moved this knight out of the way. He is attacking this pawn. But I'm not sure if he is, because if he takes here, I can take, take, knight here, threatening these two. So that pawn's actually not on pre. But he's covering this one. I'd love to get this rook here. I don't really want to move this rook because that's an attacking unit. So do we play bishop here? And then try to get the knight there. That's Oh no, because if I move the bishop there, he will come here. If I move the knight there, it might just become a target. Now if I move this pawn, he takes. 
do I have enough there? I'm not sure. What about I move this pawn and then put the knight behind? It's quite slow, but it does give me the opportunity to do this, and it only helps my position. I'm going to play this move. Now, again, the point is, if he takes here, takes, takes, I have knight g4. Knight g4 threatens queen h2 mate and attacks e5. So I'm improving my position, but giving my opponent a chance to sort of hang himself here. Um, I'm proving my position because my knight comes here. I didn't want to move my knight there straight away because this pawn. Now, have I missed something? Or does this and this win a piece? And this is, at this level, still a very good tactic. All levels up to like 2200. If you see a tactic that your opponent wants to play, but you've worked out it's not very good, let your opponent hang himself. Play a useful move. Let him play the tactic that he wants to do. And again, you don't even have to win the game. It's so funny. You can win a game of chess up to about 2400 strength by not doing much. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you play good moves, but you don't... Uh, again, I think I just moved my king here. There's no, no reason to do anything else. But you allow your opponent to go wrong. And if you play good moves, then... I'm just going to move my king here. If you play good moves, then, you know, it's not going to go wrong your position, right? Because you're playing good moves. Okay, now I take with a queen, maybe. If I take with a king, he has a check. So I take with a queen. And he's got two pawns for the piece. But my pieces are coming in quite quickly. He's got a little bit of compensation. Whenever you win material, generally, your opponent will get a little bit of compensation. I could come here. But I'm gonna. I like this square for my knight. I'm gonna have to move a bit quicker. And again, just trying to find the best squares for my pieces. This square for the knight looks good, so I've given up going this way. And now I could move this one in, but let's let's just move the knight that's attacked because this is also a decent square for my knight moving towards the king side. I want to get my bishop in and my rook. Maybe I've allowed this move, which is a bit annoying. And I'm gonna centralize my queen because that queen coming in there was a little bit annoying. So I'm always on the outlook for ways my opponent can try to get counterplay. Um, I want to get my bishop to f7, actually, and then centralize the rook. This is a good move uh, because he puts a little bit of pressure here. Now, I could move my rook here, but I can't get my bishop out. So it's actually still a little bit tricky here. Um, I think I'm going to try to exchange more pieces off. That knight's very good. I material up so I can exchange in the position. And uh, this pin, it's not too scary because I can break it with this move. And again, if the queens come off, I'm very, very happy. And maybe I can now get the queens off. And again, I'm just trying to simplify because I'm material up. There's probably other ways you can play, but um, if you can exchange and take the sting out of your opponent's active pieces, the queen and the knight, then why the hell not do that? And... Uh, this uh, does exchange the knights off, and now he's got to do something with this guy. He probably should try to keep pieces on the board, but he exchanged it off more. Exchanges help me. Now, my back rank is weak, so I could go here, but then his rook comes in. But then I can kick that away. I actually like my rook being on this rank, because I want, I want to put a rook here, exchange rooks off. So my next plan is to move the bishop, move a rook. And the other thing you'll find... Again, you also have to keep an eye on the structure. And like the last game I had in the speedrun series, I know the endings from the Dutch opening very well. And I know that these pawns, let's move the bishop anyway, these pawns can be a real weakness uh, in the ending because of this little pawn move. Now, I can't swap the rooks off at the moment. I could go knight here. And I might do that just to cover this square and to get... The rooks off. Let's do that again. I, I'm very happy to keep exchanging because he's only got two pawns for the piece, and this stops his rook coming in here. Controls this square. I could have also brought my king in last last idea, but I want to get one more rook off, one more rooks off the board. I think. I mean, maybe him moving his pawn here helps him a little bit, but I don't think it's a big deal. And this move a4 could be a very useful move. Got to move a bit quicker. My time's getting a little bit low here, and. Um, Okay, now the reason I didn't move my king before is because I thought the rook could come over to this square. But now my king can come in here. My h pawn's not going to be weak. And before I exchange rooks off, 
I'm going to centralize this king. It makes sense. Now, maybe he can come here and try e4. Not too worried about that. Let's let's do this. He might win a pawn here. He's doing. He's playing well. I mean, this this guy. He, he hasn't played too many mistakes at all. Um, so, you know. And now I this rook. I kind of want to kick away. Or do I just step out of the pin so I can move this pawn? Let's step out of the pin. I think my king's safe here because he hasn't got any anything that can check it. And now if he tries to move a pawn, I can just take it. And I want to coordinate my rooks on the open file next, I think. Maybe even bringing my knight to this square. Again, I'm just trying to think how to improve pieces would be good. And if he goes h5... Then he loses the g5 square, so my knight could come back to this square. That's a really delicate operation. But I think before we do that, let's let's use our rooks. So we'll double them up. Might as well improve them in a very natural way. Because I might better win this game just by doubling rooks on the 7th rank. Uh, and again, my opponent hasn't done much wrong here. But it's uh, just a little bit of... It was that tactic again. He just, uh, you know... He just fell into a quite a common mistake, which the good thing about losing to a tactic in an opening middle game is you shouldn't really fall for it twice, right? Because it should be stuck in your mind and you should be like, okay, I'm not going to fall for that, that, that malarkey again. Okay, now he's trying to get some tactics with this check, but I don't think there's anything to worry about because um, my king can come back even into the corner. He's only got one active rook. So let's just bring my king all the way back. This rook is dead. You can't do anything with that. So I don't have to worry about this. I've just got to get out of the way of any checks. And I think I'm even going to bring my knight in now. So my knight already... It doesn't actually threaten to go there yet. But it looks like quite a nice piece, doesn't it? This is quite a nice move. Because if I take, he goes check, winning my knight. So maybe my last move is a little bit... A little bit unhinged so yeah maybe i maybe i did jump there a bit too soon okay now can we put it over here let's oh i'm gonna go here and put it over here against the temple on the rook but maybe I'm, I'm i think i'm doing it being a bit too clever with my knight here i don't need to be moving knight yo around but where does he put his rook he has to come all the way over here and then i'm gonna double up my rooks definitely so uh, this move is just a blunder and my knight knight's a tricky little guys comes in well played to my opponent generally i think he played very well i came up with my a game there and um going through the opening we talked about lots of things now what did my opponent do wrong he played he played very normal very good moves and i think the position was getting critical around here and this is certainly where his next move it, it, it indicates he's not sure what to do rook b1 I don't see any point behind that move. And you've got to play with an idea, a purpose in mind for the future. Remember, whenever you move a piece, you've got to be like, okay, what's that doing later on in the game? You know, you've got to be thinking like that. Where's it going later on? And I don't know where that's going. So round, this is the first mistake, playing with, playing, with losing a tempo, playing without a purpose. Maybe here he should have moved his knight like he did immediately because he would have got a whole tempo on the game. Maybe he could have gained some space on the queen side with his pawns pushing like this. This would have made sense. And that was his first error. And then I set him up here. So I wanted to play knight here, but then I thought this knight could be in trouble. So I want to stop this pawn from moving. So I'm playing a useful move to try and get control of this square by moving my knight in. And then maybe my bishop. And I'm setting him up because I see what his idea is with his last move. He wants to take here. And I realize it's losing, so he kind of falls into it, hook, line, and sinker. And uh, this was obviously his, his losing mistake. So only a two, couple of small mistakes there for my opponent, and I very much doubt he will fall for that mistake again. Cheers, and bye for now.